Hello you lovely lot and it's me here Steve, welcome back to another video. Um, I'm out today on my local woodlands, not far from me. This is the quiet one, I like this one. Um, basically, it's still early-ish, it's about two o'clock and I have had one person come past in that direction. So, sort of holding fire was set up at the moment. But what I plan to do is have a bit of a Christmas themed camp. So. I'm going to wait around a bit, I might make some pegs ready for the uh, for the Levu and then um, yeah, we'll get set up so I ain't going to bore you with all that and uh, I'll bring you back when we're, we're up and running. So while I'm waiting for the activity to die down a little bit in these woodlands, I am making tent pegs ready. So all I've done in my area, uh, there's lots of hazel, so I use hazel, so depending on where you live, it might be something different, but hazel seems to be in a lot of places, so I usually get sort of that size, you can get bigger, doesn't really matter. And then all I literally do is get my knife and then just literally point the end. And I'll do this for a few of them. Doesn't have to be super sharp, just enough to get it in the ground. So there we have it. Is it focusing? So yeah, just look like that. I don't even, I don't even bother putting a notch on the end because they usually have these little, these little riches. The lines just down there. There we go. That's all the tent pegs made up. My lovely new logo by Elliot Bushcraft. If you fancy one of them sort of logos made for yourself or made with my pattern on, I'll put a link in the description. Right, well I believe camp's all set up now, so it's a bit of a palace really, <laughs> but it's a, it's a Christmas camp so I kind of wanted to go out of a bang because this, this might be my last one for the year, I don't know. So let's have a look, little look around the shelter. I haven't seen anyone else recently, so looks like we're good. Let's have a look. So we have... One half of Polish poncho there, and another one there. And all I've done is I've flipped it upside down. So I'm probably going to sleep laying that way down there, and then that could just be sort of bag storage or whatever. And then <coughs> there's all the tent pegs I made up earlier. Work much better on soft soil. And then, that's the shelter there, so not bad at all. Just fancy turn different really. And then, because I'm in a sort of public woodland, I've uh, put up the old camo poncho that side. So hopefully they won't see flames from that direction. And then they won't see flames from that direction. So, I've used this a couple of times, this poncho, it's not bad, the old re -tre real tree camo, so hopefully that should stop it from that direction, but later on there shouldn't be anyone around, and I'll say in the direction of my fleece over there, there's nothing, it's just nothingness, so that is it, that's my home for tonight, oh, you'll have to let us know in the comments what you think. So, a better view of it. Look at that. Mega canvas shelter. So, because I've been arsing around with this for so long, trying to get it nice, but I've got to get some wood pronto because I think about f in about an hour there's going to be no light, it's going to be pitch black, and I'm not getting mm. firewood in the pitch black. So, I've got some special food to do tonight. I think you'll all enjoy what I'm going to cook. Hopefully, it cooks well and it doesn't take a million years. So, I want to get some wood and then hopefully by the time you come back it'll be dark and I'll cook some food. <laughs> hey, I'm out, I'm out. It's amazing. It's been so long. It feels like forever not coming out. I know I've been doing my little day camps and that, but Jesus, this is nice. On my own though, that's the only thing. On my own, so a little bit of reflection time. But right, let's get the wood. Because it's that time of year now where it is quite wet. Uh, I predominantly go for things 
like that, which is sort of dead standing. You can see it's dead because it's pretty much collapsed, but just cut into it a little bit and it, it feels like decent wood, so I'm going to have that bit. Because I uh, don't want the, the ground's quite wet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the the bag that holds the poncho up, and I'm going to just put all the wood on top of that for now. But I have got a really cool fire pit that I bought from um, I think it was Millet or Guy Outdoors, and it was during the Black Friday sales. Usually, at the moment I think it's 16 quid, but usually it's like 32. I got it for like 7.99, and it's absolutely mad. So. Once I get this done and the wood done, I'll show you it because it's really good. The only downside is it's about three kilograms, so it's not for the light, lightweight backpacker at all. So it's more for me doing stuff like this in the wood. So let's go. Let's bring you down here and show you this then. So this is it. It's a stainless steel barbecue, I believe. Um, but how the hell I got it for seven ninety nine or whatever it is? I don't know if you can make it for that much. But I thought for little trips like this, where I need something a little bit bigger than a bush box, and I can't really be asked for doing it in the soil because it, you know, you got to clear it up and. Then you've got potentials of problems with the soil and all that stuff. So this is just in a pit. So let's get it out. So it comes with this piece here. And I believe all you do is that's the pan. And then there's a leg section. So that's the leg section. Just opens up like that. And then let me bring you down here. So that just opens up like that. Get your pan section. And then that just sits in there like that. How cool is that? And then this little centerpiece sits in the middle. And you've got a bit there for your wood. Sort of sitting get a bit of air through them little holes and then it also comes with the grip that is amazing for 7 dollars have a nice little fire not not worry about the ground it all comes in that little carry case so if you're interested in one of them I think they sell them on it's either go outdoors or millets and at the moment I think they're 16 quid which is still pretty damn good so if anyone's interested in it i'll put a link in the description of where i got mine from and then yeah check it out might be handy for you let me say it's it's about two and a half three kilograms so it ain't light but if you're doing something like this or you're just going to the beach and you want a little barbecue spot on so i'm going to crack on with the wood because i've got loads to do because i'm cooking a not a whole chicken i wanted to get a, a quail they didn't have any so I've got a big boneless lump of chicken that I'm going to cook on a spit the rotisserie style so I'll best get some wood <laughs> oh that light's bright isn't it oh, well just got the uh, my little leather chair sorted out with the legs made a little spit for the chicken in a bit I really do need to get a move on though because as you can see this light's starting to really diminish but I'll take you over quickly and show you that's my little spit there. 
Just two wide pieces from Hazel again. I've just taken from different trees. So I am going to scrape the bark off of that in a minute. And then my famous leather chair, which is basically just held by a couple of sticks. So everything in this camp is sticks, isn't it? Stick there, stick here, stick there, stick over there. <laughs> so it's a proper bushcraft camp. So I've got got this much wood so far. This is all hardwood there, but it's not going to be enough, nowhere near enough. And this is uh, so most of that's pine, which I'm going to do my feather sticks with because their pine is nice and soft. So this is camp. So I've got all my bed set up and everything. I've got the, uh, I'll show you in the morning when it's lighter, but I've got the British Army uh, olive bivvy bag, climate sleeping pad with just a full blanket underneath, and the British Army uh, Arctic sleeping bag, that's the one. So what I'm gonna do, still need to get more wood, it's getting really dark now, but I'm just gonna get the, uh, get the bark off of this. So, get these big knots out. Get them off. But what I can do to get the bark off easier than trying to actually cut it, you can kind of just scrape it with the flat side of your knife, so just get it like that and just get through like that. You don't need to like cut into it. So I've got as uh, I've got as much wood as I can process for now. Um, I'll just take you over and show you. I'm going to make a couple of feather sticks because the wood's all wet here and everything, and I don't think it's going to like. I was going to do flint and steel for this one. I may give it a go. I don't know, but because it's so blooming wet, I'm I'm a bit unsure of it. So we'll see. Anyway, let's take you over. So there's all that wood there. See all that wood, and then I've split all this. And then I've made them two bits on the top of for my feather sticks and then I've made a bit of a, a Jenga fire in there so we'll get these feather sticks made and then we'll light the fire. It's getting on for about five o'clock now I think. Whew. But Burton Outdoors is a little glow stick over there. Uh, camp's looking alright though. So let's crack on. See how good this wood is for feather sticks. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's fairly straight.
think the, uh, the owls are coming out now. I can hear them. Little wood pigeons, wherever they are. Someone's, someone's making a noise. Listen to that. Love that sound. That, that sound, I think, is why we come to the woods. This is that. Lovely. That sound makes this all worthwhile. All this hard work, cutting wood, everything. Just sit, listen to that, have a beer. Fantastic. Anyway, I bought some today. I haven't even put it on really yet. It's getting a bit nippy now anyway, so... Oh, what do you think of that? I'll let you listen to that. Hey, before we get this uh, fire on, I'm going to give my crack open a can of goblin and put it in my kuska. Kuska. Because I don't want to get to the end of the night and realise I've got a can of beer left. So. Lovely, you see that? Love, love a goblin. Ugh. You got to treat yourself on these occasions, didn't you? So, this is my Christmas basically, or Christmas campus. <laughs> oh, good. I say, it seems like forever with all these. Uh, all these sort of like lockdowns and things like that going on. Luckily, I'm allowed to go out, so I'm allowed overnight stays, so it's not it's not a big issue. But yeah, I think this this may be the last one until next year. So right, we have a little gobble of this, gobble gobble, <laughs> and then uh, get the fire going. I might I might have got the charcoal off. Just if it doesn't go, I'm a little. I might just put some cotton wool balls underneath as well, just to help it. But. We do the child cloth to ignite it, basically. And we'd try out that new um, fire pit, see if it's any good. So, if it's still standing at the end of this, you know, buy one if you want. 
Oh god. I love them sounds. Sounds at night though. That's what, like I say, that's what it's all about really. But let us know what you think about the setup. Something different. So it's, uh, it's a bit overkill really. I could have just brought the half of you out and had done with it, but I like to try different things. So <laughs> and it seems alright. It's quite nice actually. Quite cozy in front of the fire. And then, uh, yeah, I'll get this uh, bit of chicken on as well because I imagine it's going to take an hour or two. Right, it's Greg on. So, I have done the old, uh, I've done the flint and steel in a previous video, but I did say I was going to do it again on this one. So, I've got some, this jute twine stuff, basically like just mangled up string. Um, and I've got, Little bits of char cloth that I've made, and then I've got steel that doubles up as a socket for bow drill, and there's my flint or my bit of flint. So we'll get that going, and then I'll show you I'll show you what happens. So, like I was shown before, how I was shown to do it, is to get a piece of char cloth there, put it underneath the stone, and then you stroke down towards it. This is only one way of doing it, you can do it other ways. So, let's see if I can do it. There we go. See the way, it, see the way it's glowing on there. So now what I've got to do, remove the camera because that's going to spread really quick. Wow! Right, put it in your tinder bundle like that, and just blow. And then eventually it will ignite. Get me, get me, get me feather sticks ready. Wow, there we go. And then we have it. Christmas fire with flint and stone. So, while the fire's going lovely, I'm going to get this nice chunk of chicken on. Oh, I've been waiting for this to, oh, I've been waiting for this. It's a big old, big old bit of chicken. Like I say, I wanted to get quail, but they don't do it anymore by the looks of things. So, we got some big lump of chicken and some other bits and bobs, so we'll stick that on. Don't worry everyone, I've got some hand sanitizer stuff, so it'll be fine.
well, the chicken's taken a uh, Chicken's taking quite a bit of time to cook, so I've sort of skewed it a different way now, so it's sort of in, out, sort of in and out like that, so I can actually rotate it, because at first it was just kind of hanging there. But I've got these two tin foil food parcels, which I sort of prepared earlier. This one's got some sprouts in, this one's got some parsnips and potatoes. Yeah, King Edward potatoes, so I'm going to give them a little. Well, these are going to sort of go in last, sprouts. The um, parsnips and potatoes, I'm going to give them a little spray of oil. And I'm going to get them sort of in the fire now because I think they're going to take a while anyway. And the chicken's probably going to be another half hour, hour maybe. So I'm just slowly cooking it. I've never done it before, so I'm not used to it. So let's find out. So in this one, like I said earlier, this has potatoes and parsnips so we'll just give them a spray with some oil would we'll usually use a bit of goose fat or something but not fussy today let's get some oil on there so they crisp over a bit hoping for a really good sort of Christmas dinner basically this could come out like a load of rubbish but we're still in seat so let's turn the chicken yeah that's coming along nicely and then uh, scrape some scrape some of these embers up over here just chuck chuck this in I think Say if they uh, they cook a bit too quick, we can always take them out. It's fine. There's one cool thing you can do when you've uh, had your hobgoblin and I'll show you that now. You can make these little, stick it, cut them open, make two little doors and you can literally make these little lanterns with a candle in. How cool are they? Food's still going. This chicken's taken forever. But I've taken the potatoes and the parsnips out of the foil because they just fell apart. And then I've stuck half of that grill there. It seems to be doing the job. So I just rotate. This chicken's coming along now. Oh, it's dripping. It's dripping. This fire pit seems good though. Not had any issues with it. Oh, I've always wanted to do a, a roast dinner on a campfire, but my god, does it take a long time! So I've had, <laughs> I've had the chicken on for ages, and uh, I've got. I took the vegetables out of, well, sorry, the potatoes and the parsnips out of the foil because they were just fall, literally disappearing, falling out everywhere. I've put the sprouts on, I've put the um, sage and onion stuffing on, the little ch two chipolatas, and the chicken's cooking nicely. So I think I've done just about enough wood, but we'll have a little look, you see what you think. So this is the. Uh, Christmas dinner or roast dinner on a campfire. So there you go, you got your cremated 
parsnips and potatoes. You've got sprouts in that little package there. The chicken is starting to look absolutely lush. But that's taken nearly two hours to get like that. And then I've got these two little chipolatas, sage and onion, stuffing balls. This is going to be good. And then I'm going to uh, do some gravy, I think, in my mess tin. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. So, most of the food's done. Just about to pull the bird off of the stick. Uh, potatoes are done. I lost the sausage because it rolled off the grill and went into the fire. So, that's one gone. Uh, and I'm just using my Yugoslavia mess kit to uh, make some chicken gravy. So, we'll get the gravy done and then uh, we'll show you the meal. It's a good one. It's taken me about two and a half hours. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. I am real. It's about half eight now. I'm starving. Absolutely starving. But, it's worth trying these things. There she is. He's just falling off the stick. Wow. Oh no. Oh, lost the stuffing ball. Losing everything tonight. Well, the sprouts are not quite ready, but that's my dinner. Oh yeah. And then I've got this really I've accidentally made this really thick gravy. So I'm gonna just pour that on there. I think what I'll do is I'll get the sprouts afterwards. that roast dinner was absolutely delish so I'll put a few logs on the fire now probably about half eight so I'm going to finish off my last beer and a half and then uh, just chill out wait for this fire to go down and then probably have an early night because I am shattered I'm not going to lie it's been quite tested doing all this but the fire pit has been really good so, I'll tell you what though, it's been so nice just to get out again, it's so nice. Oh. Been hard work, it has been hard work, I've had to uh, do quite a bit with the shelter, watch out for people. Wood's always a problem this time of year, if you don't get it early, you're screwed. And then you're sort of trying to walk around in the middle of the night trying to find wood and it's you know, there was a punky pine earlier that more or less nearly came down on top of me and I was looking for some extra bits and I was like, oh my god, you know, that could have ended badly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so for the two and a half hours it took me to cook the uh, the chicken and the other bits, I probably, probably ate it in about 30 seconds. <laughs> so, oh, 
hopefully tomorrow in the morning if it's not too bad and not giving off too much smoke I could uh, do a bit of breakfast and uh, we'll do a few shout outs uh, there's a couple of channels I've been watching lately and to be, to be honest with you they're, they're guys that have kind of just started out but I really enjoy them I thoroughly do so tomorrow morning when we wake up we'll, uh, we'll go through them so I've got probably yeah, goblin and a half left, and then I think we go to bed about nine, half nine when it when it's gone down. Fancy an early night. hell is that on my Levu? Looks like a little gecko. Hey. Right everyone, it's uh Coming up to 10 o'clock now, I've been here since about, I don't know, about half one, something like that in the afternoon. I'm bloody shad. I've had to sort all this stuff out, wood, food, all that lot. I've had a really good time, don't get me wrong. It's been, it's been lovely to get out again and do all this. But, as you can probably tell, it's freezing. So, I'm gonna get into my Arctic bag Get a good night's sleep and then I'll um, see you all in the morning. So, good night everyone. Hi, good morning everyone. It's, uh, it's about quarter to six and um, I had a really, really good night's sleep. I actually slept like a baby. And um, I don't know if you can see in the background, uh, Burton Outdoors, who sent me the uh, glow stick. That actually went all night long, it's still going now. So. We'll do a little bit of rain, I think, in the next few hours, so I can actually see it in the air now. So I'm going to get some wood, get the fire going a little bit, so I can have some breakfast, and then I will pack up and uh, head home, I suppose. So, but yeah, it's been good. It's been an enjoyable first camp after a while, so I'm going to get the food on, and then uh, we'll do a couple of little shout-outs, like I promised last night. Let's crack on. Oh, against the clock now. So as you might have just seen then, I've just, uh, just stripped all the wet bark off of the uh, bits of uh, wood that I've just cut. It's, it's all soaking wet, so I took all the bark off them back to dry wood, and then we've got some... Uh, I'll take you over and show you. Just cut a, bits, cut a bits of dry wood, bark stripped off, 
and then sort of finer kindling bits to get it going. Then I think these two I'll probably make into a feather stick or something. Wood. Kind of cut past it, but. You know what, I knew the rain was coming but I didn't think it was going to come in like that so I've uh, had to make the tarp that, so if I take you around camp that's what we, the uh, Lavu shelter that we've got and then if you remember I had that poncho facing that way well it's now my tarp for the fire which was what it was originally going to be so still on that ridge line up on a line there and then ingeniously because I've had, got no more uh, paracord there's a big vine that runs up there and I've just used that as a as a line <laughs> it works so so we've got one shot of this fire we've made a little uh, feather stick TP sort of arrangement um, give that a go and see what happens if it doesn't light then that's it I, am, I ain't having any breakfast I can't stay here all day <laughs> let's give it a go First fire attempt failed, feather sticks, uh, two Vaseline cotton wool balls and the thing still bloody went out and it was all kindled down and everything so I've just walked off, I've got one cotton wool ball left and I've just gone off and found a big section of bark so hopefully when that gets going that's ferocious enough to actually get the fire going so that's this is my last chance.
and then we call it quits. <laughs> These things happen, you know, it's not all living easy peasy. And that is why birch is my go-to fire lighter. Even when it's wet, much better than cotton wool, it burns really ferociously. So, see that now, all this wood is pretty damp, but have a look at this. It's all pretty wood, wet wood there. It's burning, no problem. Let's get some coals, and then we'll have some brekkie. Yeah. Oh, you just got to uh, keep persisting, didn't you? Right. So for breakfast, I have some black pudding, some Lincolnshire sausages, and some bacon. Oh, that's really nice. So I'm just going to let the flames burn off a little bit and get it on.
breakfast is uh, cooking a treat now. Just waiting for that. Uh, got some hot water on in the uh, Yugoslavia mess kit. I managed to get all that gravy out of it last night somehow. <laughs> I thought I'd bugger it up, but um, yeah, I'll take you over now. There's a nice bed of embers under there, and they're just just cooking nice and slowly. So yeah, that birch saved my life. It did, well, not saved my life, but saved my breakfast. So they're all cooking lovely now. Got the mess kit. I'm just slowly heating up. But if I turn the light off, you can see the embers. It's a nice bed under there. With the light on, it doesn't really look like it, does it? So this is the uh, set that comes with the Yugoslavia mess kit. You've got a spoon, oh, a muddy fork, and a knife. That all comes in the comes in the little bit. It goes in, slides in there. Gets a little tin opener and a little bottle opener in there as well. So pretty ingenious bit of kit. And there we have it. Sausage, bacon, and black pudding. I can hear pheasants in the background as well. Right, I'll we'll take this grill off. I'll put that in there. Well guys, uh, as predicted, the weather's really starting to come in now and I know it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. So, I said I was going to do the shout outs, only problem is, because I'm where I am here there's no phone signal whatsoever, there's no internet, nothing, so I literally cannot go on my phone to sort of record the names and that. So what I'm going to do is sort of in the end credits I'll, um, I'll put the names up and I'll put possibly a little bit in there why I like them. But generally, most of these channels that I'm going to list on there, I like them because they're just interesting. They've got very informative sort of information and uh, they do quite a lot of bushcraft and stuff. So guys have only got sort of smallish channels. So I think, you know, if they deserve a few more. And if you could go into the uh, description and just have a look and then give them a sub, say you, you came over from me. So I'm going to start packing these wet lavoos away and then uh, see if I can get out of here before the storm comes in. So. If I don't see you soon, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching everyone and uh, take care. See you later. Well, that's me all packed up. There's a little bit of a break in the in the weather, so I'm going to make a dash for it um, before it absolutely chucks it down. First time I've ever had to pack a wet lavoo away. That was weird, and the thing weighs a bloody ton. So let me just flip you around. So this is the area where I camped last night. So leave absolutely no trace whatsoever. So I kicked all the leaves back. 
no burnt wood, none of that stuff lying around. All my rubbish is in my bag. That's my bivy on the bottom, and then that's the lavoo on the top. And so I packed it a lot neater when I left, and then obviously my tripod, I'll carry it out with me. Mm -hmm. 